Okay, this is a short lecture on growth of functions and the notation for big O, small O, big omega, small omega and theta. Okay, so what does this uh, notation mean? So Fn is of order big O Gn that means F is no faster than G and small O means F is slower than G and theta means F is about as, as fast as G. Big omega means is no slower than g that, as, like that means basically faster or equal to and small omega means faster than g so let's read like a more formal definition the big o and uh, fn is in in order big o gn that means there are constants c and m positive constants such that fn is between uh, 0 and c times gn for for some for all n greater than m where m is some uh, cutoff point so basically that means is after some point m uh, G, uh, fn is dominated by gn c times gn is always below c times gn that's a big o notation similarly the big o notation uh, big omega notation is a lower bound is exactly similar and fn is bounded from below by c times gn okay and the big theta notation is F, Fn is bounded by C1 and C2 times Gn from both sides by C1 from below and C2 Gn from above. So after some point M, F is uh, uh, covered between C times G1 and C times C2 times Gn. Okay, so basically this is a tight bound. And then we had a little O notation fn is o times gn that means there is a the again constant such that f is bounded uh, b from above by c times gn similarly the little omega notation fn is bounded from below by c times gn for at some point so initially we don't care after some m it goes uh, fn is greater than gn and c is some constant number greater than zero so so this is used for measuring space complexity and time complexity let's look at space complexity so what does space com complexity mean it is a temporary workspace uh, memory needed to solve a problem it doesn't include the input size and in many problems we'll see a space time trade-off that means if we had more space we could run a, a run a bit faster or and vice versa it will take a longer if we don't have too much space and then the notation that we use for time also applies to space so let's look at the space time hierarchy it's, a, it's from wikipedia and uh, there are lots of different ones but the ones we are interested in p p is basically uh, the time taken by a deterministic turing machine and polynomial is polynomial and n some polynomial of n okay and np stands for non deterministic turing machine Polyn it's again polynomial time where turing machine makes the right choices non deterministic it's not non polynomial okay that's very important to remember and the other important one is P space, where deterministic Turing machine takes polynomial space. And then log space and other ones are there. But you won't get time to look at all of them. And depending on the problem and the complexity, you'll have to look at some of these. And then there's Savage's theorem, which says P space equal to N P space and exponential P space is equal to N exponential P space. So you can look at this up in Wikipedia if you're interested or in Corman. So the space-time hierarchy goes like this. So P is out here. Yeah? NP is, is out, uh, includes P. Then there's P space, ex exponential time, exponential space. And these are more and more difficult problems. These are easy problems. Okay. And there's another view of the picture. But, and this, this is P. And this is NP. This is co-NP. We'll look at it later. P space equal to NP space. And exponential time these are like really hard problems so we mostly concentrate on p and some in np np hard problems later on so the idea is basically what is a hard problem it is a traveling salesman problem a salesman has to visit every city once exactly once in the shortest path and if you try to take all combinations and permutations you get n factorial and then you can do a bit faster by using dynamic programming n square 2 raised to n Okay, and this is just a joke. Thank you.